I need a lamplight, Phoenix. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Safrada Live, and we have a wild one this week. We are heading to Modern to play 68 guard Lamplight Phoenix combo, and that sentence is one of the most mind-blowing magic sentences I've ever heard. Not only are you playing 68 cards, which is way more than you're supposed to, we actually need each and every one of those cards to be able to execute our combo, and then our combo is built around Lamplight Phoenix, a very forgettable, unplayed Murders at Karlov Manor Rare. And I gotta say, this deck is an absolutely genius example of mathematical brewing. And we'll jump into the math of this at the end of the deck deck. It blows my mind that someone figured it out. So let's talk about this deck, how it's comboing, what it's trying to do, the math of it, and then jump into a league seated in action. So we are built around Lamplight Phoenix. So Lamplight Phoenix, three minute three, three flying. When it dies, we can exile it and collect evidence four. So exile at least four mana value cards from our grave. Yard. If we do, we get to return to the battlefield tap. So the idea of our deck is to combo this with Altar of Dementia. Altar of Dementia, we can sack a creature to make target player mill equal to the creature's power. So if we sack a Lamplight Phoenix, someone's going to mill three cards because its power is three. And Lamplight's pretty much the only thing that we're going to be sacking in this deck for the most part. Uh, so the actual idea of this deck, you need to understand that the mana value of our deck is incredibly high on average. We're a 68 card deck, but we're only playing 20 actual lands because lands have no mana value and we need as much mana value for collecting evidence as possible so instead we're playing like Lauren Revealed, Eagle of the North which are kind of like slow lands because of land cycling but they up our average mana value for removal we do have some cheaper removal but we have Solitude, Subtlety, Leyline Binding Supreme Verdict, all these really expensive removal spells because the goal of the deck is this, the goal is if we play Altar of Dimension Lamplight Phoenix we need at least 4 mana worth of evidence to collect to start the loop but what we do is we sack the Lamplight Phoenix to the Altar of Dementia to mill ourselves for three cards. And this is where we got to get a little bit mathy. So if you actually math out our deck, the average mana value of a card in our deck is 2.2794117, blah, 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 basically 2.28. So what this means is we collect evidence for to get the Phoenix back. But on average, we're going to mill a little bit over like 6.5 mana value worth of cards. So this means every time we mill ourselves, we're going to, on average, mill more mana value than we need to get our Phoenix back. So we can keep doing this in theory forever. So we mill our entire deck using this combo. And now we're going to have this really full graveyard. And then we turn the mill plan on our opponent and mill their entire deck. And the math of this is absolutely wild. So if we actually math out the numbers, this is what blows me away about the deck. So 2.28, let's say, is the average mana value of a card in our deck. What that means is there is 150 55 total mana value in our deck but if we're comboing we have a Lamplight Phoenix in an Altar of Dementia on the battlefield. So that means we're negative five. We have 150 mana value to work with as evidence. And if you think about this deck, the fastest we could combo is on turn three. If we could turn one Land Cycler to get some evidence in the graveyard, turn two Altar of Dementia, turn three Lamplight Phoenix. So that would mean that our deck would have right around 60 cards in it, probably just under. But to mill our entire deck, we would have to activate our Altar of Dementia 20 times, which means every time we activate it, we mill three, we need to collect four evidence. So we're gonna collect evidence four times 20, which ends up being 80 total mana value that we need to collect. So we have 150 mana value, but we collect 80 of it to mill our entire deck. That leaves us with 70 mana value left over. So now let's think about our opponent's deck. So say we're comboing on turn three, our opponent should have roughly 50 cards in their deck. So if we need to mill their entire deck three at a time, they have 50 50, we divide it by three. We're going to need to activate a altar of dementia, sacrificing and collecting evidence with the lamplight phoenix basically 17 times to mill our opponent's deck. So we got to do it 17 times and each activation is going to be four mana value, right? So let's times this by four. We end up with 66.6 and we had 70 to work with. So essentially we use each and every possible mana value in our deck. And this is why those extra cards playing 68 cards instead of 60 matters. If we tried to do this same combo with the same mana values with a 60 card deck, we would end up 
just short of milling our opponent out. We would mill our entire deck, but then we'd run out of evidence to collect while our opponent had like six cards left in their library or something, three cards left in their library. So the combo would all go for nothing. All this work, all this beautiful brewing would all go for nothing because there wouldn't be enough mana value. So that's why there's 68 cards in the deck. It gives us enough mana value worth of evidence to collect to actually execute the whole combo. And I am just blown away that someone mathed this out. Like this is such an amazing example of what you can do with math and magic and an amazing example of brewing to just actually go through and figure it out because the numbers are very close to exact. You know someone sat down and thought, okay, fast as I can win is turn three. How many cards are in my deck? How many cards are in my opponent's deck? How much mana value do I need to mill my entire deck? How much do I need to mill my opponent's entire deck? And they ended up with the literal perfect numbers. They just absolutely nailed it. So that is Lamplight Phoenix combo. That's the math. That's the theory. That's all that stuff. But can it actually work? Let's jump into a league and find out. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hopefully all that math stuff wasn't too boring. I just find it super interesting. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back in a bit for the wrap up. We've got new tokens and playmats, and you can even get the token signed if you want. Check them all out over at mtdgoldfishmerch.com. Need some magic cards? Well, you can snag them from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, over at cardkingdom.com slash mtggoldfish. It is modern time today. We are playing some... Eh, it sounds fine. Only one land, but we got a bunch of land cycler, uh, cyclers. We are playing Lamplight Phoenix combo. <laughs> Lamplight Phoenix is a card that uh, I didn't even think was standard playable. It just looked like a really kind of janky slow Phoenix, but it's possible, possible, possible to use it to combo off in uh, in modern. Let's crack our fetch here. We're probably just gonna Purodine, I guess. Uh, so we're gonna need double red. We need blue, we need white. Let's just take Hollowed Fountain for now. Take the Hollowed Fountain untapped. Preordain to Fairy Bottom, Supreme Verdict Bottom. There's Lampy. Okay, so if if we can get our mana, we got a shot. <laughs> we actually have a shot. Opponent gonna commit a crime against us. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> they crime themselves. <laughs> Technically, cracking a Mishra Babla on your opponent is now committing a crime. Opponent Island in. So for this to work, we need our Alter Dementia. Then we also need opponent's gonna preordain. Then we need our Lamplight Phoenix somewhere, and then. We sack it to mill ourselves a bunch and collect a bunch of evidence, and then we're playing 68 cards. <laughs> what is it with all these 68 card decks these days? It's like suddenly the magic community has decided 68 cards <laughs> is the truth. Island cycle. Lorien revealed. Steam vents. Steam vents untapped. Preordain. Meticulous Archive, Leyline Binding. Let's put Binding Bottom. Yeah, I think we can actually go both bottom. Another Teferi, all right. We'd rather have an untap land because then we can play Teferi next turn. Worst case, we can uh, Eagles in the North to get a, a Plains. We are down to 15 at our own hand, opponent. Passes, we draw Lorien Revealed. Well, let's just, let's just plain cycle. Keep on cycling, grab a elegant poller. Play the elegant poller, surveil. Yeah, I mean, I guess we go graveyard past the turn. I mean, we are getting close. We'd really love to somehow get down to fairy just to uh, just to make sure our opponent can interact with us. I mean, we still have to, I mean, we could cast the Phoenix. We'll see. We're probably gonna keep land cycling here. We do wanna keep hitting our land drops. Lorien Rebuild, cycle it. What are we doing? Well, let's just take Zagath Trium, that's fine. Take the Trium, get all of our land types, draw a counter spell. Well, play the Trium. Let's just pass, I think. We could run out of Teferi, but I think our opponent's gonna counter it. We'd rather our opponent do something, we counter it, and then play the Teferi. Dragon Rage Shanala passes. Preordain, well, let's preordain. Two lands. We could play a surveil land. We could try to play it to fairy. I, it's 100% gonna get countered. If we keep the untap land, we can subtlety. All right, let's go put on top, put on bottom. So we'll draw the untap land, play the untap land, pass the turn. We'll probably just cast this subtlety at some point to see if we can get our opponent to tap down. And then next turn, we can to fairy. We can to fairy with counterspell backup. And then the turn after that, we can combo. Kill, hopefully. Alter Dementia, Lamplight Phoenix. Opponent goes to combat, attacks. 
subtlety and kill your DRC. All right, opponent's going to unholy heat to kill it. Sure. Let's see if we can resolve to fairy. If we can resolve to fairy this turn, we should be in really good shape for next turn. So we dropped to 12. Oh, we're so close. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Well, one, two, and three to Fairy Time Raveler. Counters. Well, one and two. We will counter the counter. Oh, and the Spell Pierce. All right. Well, opponent had a handful of interaction. That's not good for us. That's not good. Well, we knew they had a bunch of counters. We were hoping that it was not also a Spell Pierce. That's kind of brutal that they also had the Spell Pierce. All right. So, well, to Fairy one down past the turn. Maybe we're not going to be able to resolve it. Expressive iteration to try to draw more counters. So the thing with Lamplight Phoenix is it only triggers when it dies. So that means if we play it and it gets countered, we can't combo with it in the graveyard. Opponent finds a land, plays a land, cracks the land. Oh, wow. I think our opponent may have just killed themselves hilariously. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can combo up through a blood moon. All right, so our opponent could have force negation, I guess. Assuming they don't have force negation, I think we should win the game here. All right, one, two, altar of dementia. One, two, three, lamplight phoenix. So now we mill ourselves a bit to get mana values in our graveyard. Yes, we'd like to collect evidence. One, two, three, four. So we get back the phoenix, we mill ourselves, we mill ourselves, sack the phoenix, collect evidence, one, two, three, four. So we need to get, we need to mill ourselves to get big mana values in the graveyard. So that's why we mill ourselves first. And then after our graveyard's full, that's when we turn the milling on our opponent. All right, Supreme Verdict, get back the Lamplight Phoenix. It's kind of like really weird Hogak almost. <laughs> mill ourselves. <laughs> It's working. It is actually working. Uh, Exile of One Ring to get back the Lamplight Phoenix. Uh, mill ourselves. Sack the Phoenix. Exile a Phoenix and a Preordain. I mean, I think our opponent might just not know that how dead that they are. Uh, mill ourselves. Sack the Phoenix. So this is the combo. All right, Exile Subtlety. Mill some cards. We're getting there. We're getting there slowly. Okay, there's some big hitters. That's good. Mill. Collect evidence. Uh, one, two, three, four. Get back the phoenix. I mean, the mill's coming for our opponent. They don't know it yet, but it is. <laughs> it is coming for them. Collect evidence four. One, two, three, four. It's just about exiling the right mana values, basically. We don't want to waste any any evidence if we can help it. Mill ourselves. Sack the phoenix. Exile a one ring. Get it back. All right, should we should we mill our opponent a little so they know what's up? Let's mill our opponent just a little, just just a little off the top. <laughs> mill you one, two, three, and four. Get back the phoenix. So we need to mill our opponent ten times. Let's mill ourselves. Collect evidence. Preordain fable. I will probably we'll see the combo once, and in the future I'll probably edit some of this out because I guess it probably is a little tedious to sit through. Just like, are we exiling the right mana values? <laughs> but it is. It's basically the same theory as Hogak. So get it back. Do we have enough? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, we got enough. So we don't have to mill ourselves anymore. Now we can just mill our opponent. So Phoenix, collect evidence. Exile of solitude. Get it back. And then Phoenix. This is where it's finally good. Collect evidence. Exile a subtlety. Get it back. Opponent's down to 27 cards. Opponent's down to 24 cards. Opponent. Opponent thought they were safe with that blood moon. <laughs> Milia. Collect a little evidence. Supreme verdict. Collected. Milia. Down to 21. And sack the Phoenix. <laughs> I guess we might as well collect some evidence. How about a ley line binding will be our evidence this time. Opponent down to 18. And that's why these land cyclers are so important. We're only playing 21 real lands, but these land cyclers turn out to be essentially lands. They have a high enough mana value that they let us uh, that they let us collect evidence to get back our Phoenix. <laughs> What a what a, a weird thing that these land cyclers made such a huge impact on modern. Who would have guessed? Melia, Melia down to 12. And do it again. I mean, I guess it's theoretically possible that our opponent has triple lightning bolt in hand. If our opponent literally has triple lightning bolt in hand, they could win on their upkeep with no cards in their library. That is not likely, but it is theoretically a possibility. 
Uh, Milia, Exile, Aelorian Revealed. <laughs> Lamplight, Lamplight Phoenix being modern playable is wild. The just the those words do not make sense to me. <laughs> it looks like one of the worst of the phoenixes, but uh, a if you can find the right combo, Melia down to three, sag the phoenix. That is how you mill your opponent's entire deck with a Lamplight Phoenix of all things. An opponent zero cards in their deck, lightning bolts. Okay, yeah, we're good. We're good. We'll pass the turn. Opponent, they, they have several lightning bolts on the graveyard, so they can't burn us out. And they thought the Blood Moon would keep them safe. Unfortunately, <laughs> our combo can be played mono red. All right, so our opponent's a control deck. There isn't Murktide. What do we have that's good against isn't Murktide, if anything? All we need to win is Lamplight Phoenix Altar of Dementia. Like there is, so if we only have, let's say we have zero cards in our graveyard, then there would be a risk of whiffing. Like we could sack the Lamplight, mill ourselves for three, and if we milled three lands or something, we'd fizzle. So we'd rather have like a land cycler or two, just have a little buffer. But in theory, turn two Altar, turn three Lamplight, wins the game. <laughs> in theory, that's how it works. So we definitely want Dovin's Veto. We definitely want Teferi, I think. Subtlety is also fine. Do we want Ashiox? Is it Murktide? Yes, indeed it is. So yeah, I'd be able to kill Ragavans, DRCs, Murktides. Blood Moon, I guess, is a concern. Counters seem to be a thing. Our opponent has a lot of, a lot, a lot of counters. Can we just sideboard up cards? We can go down to Supreme Verdict, probably. Oh, the Veil of Summer seem helpful, too. Do we want Graveyard Hate? Is Graveyard Hate worth it? Or do we just try to kill the Murktides, answer the Murktides? Maybe we just bring in the Subtlety. So Prismatic Ending, Solitude, good removal. Leyline Binding, good removal. Dead Gone Necessary, One Ring Busted, Need the Land Cyclers. I could see trimming a Fable, but Fable's pretty good in grindy matchups. We gotta cut something though. We do need to cut something. Cause we have sideboard in like six cards. Let's go down one Fable. Maybe we don't go up the subtlety and maybe one Leyline Binding. Let's try it like that. Let's try it like that. So we want plus two card sideboarding, but I think that's fine. Cause if you include all the Land Cyclers, we actually play a lot of mana sources in this deck. Yeah, we'll keep this. Got to preordain to smooth things out. Hopefully we don't get Ragavan here. Ooh, all right. Well, we're getting Ragavan here. If we can find a white card, we might actually just have to pitch it to the solitude. Let's Scalding Tarn, Crack Scalding Tarn. Uh, I guess we could pitch the Teferi. I really don't want to do that. I'd rather find a worse white card like an Eagle to pitch. But if we have to, I guess we can pitch Teferi. Well, okay. Put on top. Put on top. Solitude. Pitch Dovin's Veto. I mean, that is a painful way to deal with a Ragavan. We got to do it now because of Counterspell. If we pitch multiple cards <laughs> to deal with a Ragavan and then they Counterspell, it's so brutal. We actually have the full combo on the top of our deck, too. It's just a matter of a matter of actually resolving it. Opponent Bobble does not cry of us. Targets themselves because they have a fetch land. Oh, no, you're going to dash a Ragavan? Don't dash a Ragavan opponent. All right, they're just going to get a Surveil land. That's fine. I think we got to play it slow. So opponent gets to draw a card. We could just slam Alter Dementia, but I think we just play the Triome past the turn. I think this is going to look a lot like last game, unless we can find something to fight through the counters about it. So next turn, we can try jamming a Teferi or a Fable. We'll see what our opponent does. Would rather have the Teferi down. Like, Teferi would be the best, because then we know the coast is clear for us to uh, set up our combo. Scalding Tarn. But we do need to just get the counters out of our opponent's hand. Well, let's play Scalding Tarn. Let's crack Scalding Tarn. Watch them have a Tide Binder. Normally, this deck does not have tide binder let's just take a mountain and run out fable the mirror breaker how do we feel about that opponent uh, uh, no okay opponent coming with the sideboard tech well i mean so next turn we can lorian reveal to fairy and then we're so close opponent steam vents passes so opponent probably has subtlety. The untapped land makes me think subtlety, but we are going to Island Cycle Lurian Revealed. The Steam Vents, Steam Vents to Fairy. Opponent has Counterspell, all right. I mean, opponent's down to three cards in hand. Mishra's Bobble. 
Oh, Veil of Summer would be a draw. That would be a draw. Ooh, not hitting a land drop. So our opponent has all action in hand. That's awkward. Well, let's see what we find. Counterspell. Are we fighting over this? So we can play the altar. If our opponent counters, we can counterspell their counterspell. It's either that or we just pass and do nothing and leave up the counterspell. How many counters can they possibly have? The problem is if we play this and then they kill it. Yeah, let's just let's just wait. Let's see, we're one man away from being able to play everything at once. And our opponent missing land drops. We just, we know their hand is good, right? We know their hand is full of action. It's not like a bunch of lands or something. What we'd really like is to counter war during our opponent's turn over like a Murktide or something. Well, Prismatic Ending's not the worst, just because Prismatic Ending can be pitched to the solitude. Untaps, up to six cards in hand. Dragon Rage, Shanala, passing. Wouldn't mind a land. All right, well, Lurian Revealed can get a land. So let's land cycle Lurian Revealed. Grab a Meticulous Archive. Play Meticulous Archive. Surveil. Definitely keeping Veil of Summer. And then Prismatic Ending the DRC. <sighs> Pass the turn. Oh, we are so close. We are so, so close. This Veil of Summer really changes thing. If our opponent gets too greedy, we still do need one more mana. So the opponent's gonna play a Ragavan. I think we actually just counter the Ragavan passes. We're not going forth this turn though. We're not going forth this turn. We really want one more land. If we find one more land, we can play the entire combo in one turn with Veil of Summer back up. That's what we're playing towards. Plus this turn we can flash in the solitude. It's better if our opponent plays something, but opponent not going to play anything. Well, we'll just wait then. Another solitude. I mean, there's really no rush, right? Especially, especially since we kind of want another land anyway. Opponents are really, really afraid to uh, tap their mana. Plays a bobble. Cracks a bobble, takes a peek, sees what we're drawing. Should we run out of solitude just to pressure? I think there's actually an argument just to running it out and start attacking. Yeah, let's, let's do it. We have two of them. One, two, three, four, five. Let's just cast a solitude. And opponent going to Lightning Bolt. All right, so they use a mana. Lorian revealed. Well, we will Island Cycle. Literal Island. Play the Literal Island. Pass the turn. The question's gonna be, is the Veil of Summer enough? It also doesn't stop our opponent from subtleting. So they could still subtlety even through the Veil of Summer. How about just playing your Blood Moon opponent? Don't you want to Blood Moon us? <laughs> <laughs> Just Blood Moon us, please. I've never wanted to be Blood Moon more if it means our opponent tapping their mana. Like we could see the whole combo in hand. The only question is how do we, how do we get it to resolve through our opponent's stream of counters? Well, we get a preordain. Bottom the counter spell, top the subtlety. Pass the turn. Subtlety can also, like, I guess we can just keep pressuring with these dorks at instant speed. Oh boy. So we're gonna pass the turn. Oh, we're getting close. We're getting close to doing things. So we're gonna subtlety this turn basically no matter what. Ah, oh boy. So we're gonna subtlety. Actually, maybe we solitude. Subtlety could have value against an opposing solitude. Ooh, expressive iteration, okay. That is opponent tapping some mana, which is kind of huge. That's all we really need is our opponent to tap their mana. And we should be able to, to hopefully combo off. Opponent finds a tap land, plays the tap land. Well, one, two, three, four, five. This might be greedy, but we're gonna run out the solitude. Opponent's only got three mana up. Wow, opponent's gonna spend a subtlety pitching a Murktide on the Solitude. I mean, we will put it back on top. We will untap. Three, four. Let's play a one ring. Opponent has a null. Wow, they are playing a lot of nulls, aren't they? Can we actually resolve our stuff? More expressive iteration. -y. Yeah, this is obnoxious, that's for sure. I mean, the good news is, if we can resolve our pieces, we're gonna win super easy, because <laughs> we've played through most of our decks already. Uh, we have the, so the problem is, even with Veil of Summer, our opponent can still theoretically interact with us. Control maybe is like the tricky matchup. We do have a lot of sideboard cards dedicated to control opponent. Bobble, part 40, finds a flooded strand, plays the flooded strand. Cracks the bobble, passes. Draws another card. Well, let's plane cycle, Eagles of the North. Elegant Pauler. Play the Elegant Pauler, do some surveilling. Uh, Scalding Tarn. Do we want Scalding Tarn? We also gotta be aware of the clock. I think we go graveyard, pass the turn. All right, opponent. 
<laughs> Will you please just tap out and let us kill you? Come on, come on, buddy. <laughs> Go, come on, friend. <laughs> we just want to mill a little bit, just a little off the top. Put it passes. We draw a lamplight phoenix. Well, one, two, I think we just played the lamplight. We have two of them. So one, two, three, lamplight phoenix. Opponent going to spend a counter spell. Sure, we'll pass the turn. We got a backup, we got a backup. We got a counter out of our opponent's hand. I mean, that is what our opponents, they've used I, presumably all their annuls. They've used two counter spells. Oh, so we're dead. I was not expecting that. All right, yeah, they can just cast the lightning bolt. Yeah, we can't actually stop that. They're playing Murktide, but with Underworld Breaches? Well, that does change things with how we're gonna play this. It's going to have to change things with how we're gonna play this because, uh, because yeah, that means our opponent can just win out of the blue. I didn't know our opponent's deck had the ability to just uh, to just win the game out of nowhere. Now that we know they have the ability to just win out of nowhere, that definitely means we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to go for it a little more aggressively. I was thinking eventually, like uh, if they're gonna have Murktide, we have all these answers to creatures. They're not gonna be able to kill us very easily, so we can just keep waiting and waiting, and eventually we're going to uh, to be able to do our thing. In that case, though, our opponent had. An alt win con that I was not expecting. This hand, gonna need some help from Surveil Lands, I think. I mean, we got lots of removal, so we're not just gonna lose to a creature. Own it, Ragavan. Well, Crack Flooded Strand, Elegant Puller. I guess keep the Scalding Tarn. Opponent plays a Bobble, takes a peek at our Scalding Tarn, passes. All right, they get to draw a card. We will prismatically end this Ragavan. And Scalding Tarn, go. Yeah. We do need combo pieces. We have protection if we can find the combo pieces. Opponent's gonna preordain. So we have protection if we can get to that point. All right, opponent manages to find their land. Well, crack the Scalding Tarn. Archive. We will mill the breeding pool. Temple Garden tapped past the turn. Could use a one ring. We have not seen many one rings this, uh, this match. We've seen one. And that one got annulled, so we couldn't even do anything with it. Yeah, this hand just has all defense, but no real offense. If our opponent finds another like Ragavan, it's kind of bad for us. Passing. Well, even more Dovin's Vetoes. I mean, we have we have the protection for days. <laughs> our opponent is not going to resolve non-creature spells if we don't want them to. Opponent passes. Uh, Island Go. I mean, we're hitting our land drops. So is our opponent, though. All right, so we have double, <laughs> double Dovin's Veto and theoretically a Solitude. Opponent, finally not hitting their land drops. Passes. I mean, we gotta go for Teferi, right? You know what, let's wait one more turn. Let's wait one more turn. We're gonna play the tap land and pass. We are gonna be more aggressive, but we can wait one more turn. Our opponent's actually to the discard to hand size part of this game, if they don't hit a land drop. So fighting a counter war here is kind of awkward because we get more value out of our opponent. All right, they're gonna run out of Brazen Borrower. We will Solitude it, but not yet. We'll take a hit from it. Hits us down to 15 and passes. Well, all right, here comes the Solitude to get rid of the Brazen Borrower. Oh, opponent's gonna go Counter War. All right, opponent counter spells. That's fine though, because that means Teferi's about to resolve here. Opponent, going to go with Subtlety, pitching a Cryptic Co. I mean, that is good for our opponent. So Teferi goes back on top. Yeah, that is a way around it. That is a way around it. Opponent had the Subtlety, which does get around the Veto and the Veil of Summer. Opponent untaps. But they did cost them two cards. Opponent cracks Polluted Delta. Well, let's see what they're trying to do here. Opponent, untap land. Expressive iteration. I mean, we're about to start resolving things, right? It's gotta, it's gotta happen. There's almost an argument for just countering this expressive iteration. I think it's actually close. Maybe we should have, just because our opponent's missing land drops. Like if they were hitting their land drops, the argument kind of falls apart, but because our opponent seems to be struggling for lands, there is an argument just for keeping them, keeping them off of lands. So opponent finds their land, Pluto Delta. Gets in with the Brazen Borrower. I mean, they know the Teferi's coming again. Unless they're gonna do the Solitude thing again, or Subtlety thing again. Opponent, Veil of Summer. So we draw a card. Teferi can't be countered. We get a Teferi. Teferi bounces the Brazen Borrower, we draw a card. Pass the turn. Oh, this Teferi sticking would be nice. Opponent cracks the delta. We also have four minutes, 22 seconds on our clock, so we gotta be aware of that. Opponent, five cards in hand, one of them's a brazen borrower. We do have vetoes at the ready. That doesn't kill Teferi. They're going to try to lightning bolt Teferi. 
Dovin's Veto the Lightning Bolt. I mean, we're gonna make them work for it at least. So we know one of their cards is that Brazen Borrower. Oh, the other problem's gonna be we actually have to click through the combo without timing out, so we gotta play really fast. The combo just takes a lot of clicks to get through. Opponent, Mills of Ragavan. I mean, they can Brazen Borrower the Teferi if they want to and bounce it. I don't know if that's even that valuable, but it is a thing they can do. If Teferi lives, we get to get down the one ring. I mean, they saw the combo, so they know the risk of us Untapping with them not being able to cast spells is pretty high. They thought about passing, second main phase, thinking again, just runs out of Raisin Borrower. Okay, okay. Well, we untap, we draw a mountain, we take up to fairy, play a mountain, we play a one ring, we get protection, we draw with the one ring. Flooded Strand, we will pass the turn. This does mean our opponent's gonna be able to kill the Teferi most likely. They do need to send both creatures at it, or we can fizzle it with the Leyline Binding. But I guess because of the One Ring, what else are they gonna attack? Everything at Teferi. All right, Teferi's down for now. Opponent, cast into the fire. Well, veto it. Opponent surveils, passes. All right, we take a one ring damage. Solitude, not bad, not bad. Let's one ring draw. Oh, there's a Teferi. Uh, play a Flooded Strand. Slight change of plans. Let's Soul Guide Lantern. Exile a whatever, Ragavan. And now we'll pass the turn. One, two, three, four, five. On our opponent's upkeep, Solitude. All right, opponent's gonna spend a counter spell. Sure. Draws, dashes a Ragavan. Well, this game is coming down to this. We're gonna crack the Flooded Strand. We're going to get the Triome. We're gonna wait for our opponent to attack. We are going to Leyline Binding. Oh, jeez. Um, we will Solitude, pitch to Fairy, get rid of the Dragon Rage Channeler. We have to do this just to stay alive. So basically we gotta hit our combo pieces this turn or we're gonna die. Opponent hits us, gets a treasure. Watch their last card be lightning bolt. I would be so salty. Opponent steals a subtlety. Well, okay, it all comes down to this. We untap, we drop to three. Come on, combo pieces. We drop to three, we draw for our turn. It's a preordain. Well, first we will draw with the one ring, three cards. Okay, let's preordain. See if we can find the Phoenix. Bottom, top. Can we do it in time? Can we do it in time? One, two, and three. Play the one, two. We gotta do this fast. One, two. Altar of Dementia. No way. All right, one ring. Keep the new one. Get protection. Pass the turn. Wow, Spell Snare. Opponent has every awkward counter that you do not see anymore. Everyone, vote it. Passes, well, okay, one ring draw. Soul Guide Lantern draw. And we found the combo pieces again. Do they have more answers? Can we draw an answer? Can we resolve an answer? One ring draw. All right, well, one, two. Altar of Dementia, no. You gotta be kidding me! You gotta be kidding me! You gotta be kidding me! That was their top deck! We know their hand! It was Ragavan! Their hand was Ragavan! We know 100% that's what our opponent's hand was. 100%. Well, bounce the Brazen Borrower. Play a Steam Vents. Tapped. Pass the turn. Oh, we're gonna lose. Yeah, we're dead. We got the one ring. We're dead. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Well, okay. So the good news is we clearly showed that the deck works. The bad news is we didn't win. I mean, there was going to be a concern whether we could actually execute the whole combo. Our opponent, they should scoop, but I don't know if they would. Yeah, I mean, while the deck worked, I don't know what to say. We got our opponent completely empty handed. We knew the only card in hand was that Dash Ragavan. Their draw for the turn was counterspell number 40 or something. The third literal counterspell. So the odds of hitting it maybe 10% roughly, I think, to draw an answer considering just like what was already in the graveyard. If we had more time, I think we were, <sighs> we were probably going to be able to win. What we would have liked to do is play the Teferi first to protect our thing. We could use the Leyline Binding and the Dead Gone to deal with stuff. The other thing that we 
could have done, but we're just, we're running out of time, is we could have Teferi to bounce the one ring to get rid of the ring damage and use our removal to deal with the creatures on the battlefield. But the clock's just, the clock's just getting too low. <laughs> so I just snapped off bouncing the, bouncing the Brazen Bar where, because we were just running out of time. That was a very long, interesting game of Modern. I will, I will give it that. We saw the combo work and <laughs> that game three, I gotta stop rambling. Well, we'll get him next time. We are trying to combo off with Lamplight Phoenix in Modern, and we got Lamplights literally, uh, literally for days. We are on the draw, which is a little awkward. We'll see. So we need to find Ultra Dementia. That's a missing, missing piece of this puzzle. Oh, that last game. My God. I still can't believe that game. Found it. And passes. Elegant Polar, eh? Could be, in fact, once again, blue mana. Always got that blue mana. Uh, let's just, you know what? Let's just play the Polar. Let's find, since we drew it. Play the Polar. Surveil, I think, away the counter spell. Pass the turn. So next turn, we like Puridane plus Lorraine Revealed. Oh God, it is, in fact. Oh, we might be dead. Venerated Rot Priest. Okay. What do we find? A counter spell. Ugh, again, even more. Island Cycle Lorian Reveal. Uh, we can't stop this at the moment, so for dead, we're dead. Get an island, play the island, preordain. Bottom and top. I mean, we found the combo, but we need two more turns, and I don't know if we can live that long. Snakeskin Veils on the Ink Moth. I mean, if there's good news, our opponent doesn't actually have an infect creature currently. They don't actually have a real infect creature. We can run out Lamplight Phoenix as a blocker, and if it dies, it comes back. I mean, maybe they can just get us with this Ink Moth. Might of Old Crosa. All right, six, seven, so we're going to nine. Oh, they didn't attack with the Rot Priest, so we're still going to nine, yeah. And I think that does it. So we go to nine poison, we can play the blocker. Ah, uh, we needed to be on the play. We needed to be on the play rather than the draw. If we were on the play, we would have uh, we would have been able to do it. I guess we could bring in another Supreme Verdict. Fable of the Mirror Breaker seems super slow. And maybe a Subtlety and just run it like that? Is Cursed Totem worth it? It shuts down the Hierarchs, but it doesn't stop any of the Infect creatures. Doesn't stop Venerated Rot Priest. Yeah, run it like that. I mean, we are on the play. We are on the play this time, which is a big difference. Like I said, last game, it would have been fast. Oh, all right. All right, all right. We got the Altar of Dementia. We do not have the Lamplight Phoenix currently. That's that's what we need. We need old Lampy. Let's just Scalding Tarn. If we need to kill something, we can Dead Gone. If we don't, we can Cycle the Eagles of the North. Oh, uh, it, Misty Rainforest, and pass it. All right, well, Crack Scalding Tard. Our life total shouldn't matter too much here. Uh, we will take a... All right, let's take Sacred Foundry, untapped. Cycle the Eagles of the North. Oh, did we mess up our fetching? We might have. I think we should have, yeah, we should have got a... We should have done this opposite direction. That's fine, though. We're, uh, we're still good. So we'll cycle this to take... Let's just take Elegant Poller. We don't have the combo piece yet anyway. We're still missing the Lamplight Phoenix. Hollowed Fountain untapped. Uh, I think pretty much if it's not Lamplight Phoenix, it's going bottom. We end up with a subtlety anyway. So bottom, bottom, pass the turn. Opponent cracks the Misty. Gets a Hedge Maze. Mills a land. Boy, even the Aggro deck's playing the Surveillance lands. Ink Ball's kind of annoying. That does kind of dodge some of our removal. Passes. Ooh, to fairy. Probably just dies though if we play it, doesn't it? Yeah, let's just elegant poller. Yeah, let's keep the expressive iteration past the turn. I mean, if our opponent actually fires up Think Moth, it's probably pretty bad for them. We might actually be able to dead gone it. Noble Hierarch passing. Well, we will dead the Noble Hierarch. Untap. <clears throat> expressive iteration. Mountain back, Exile Flooded Strand, play the Flooded Strand. That worked out pretty well. Solitude is not a not a horrible card to have in hand. Is it worth altering? Yeah, let's just keep waiting. We have enough mana that we can actually alter and if we find Phoenix, play it in the same turn. I do like this Solitude quite a bit. Found it Besage you. Well, good thing we didn't play it. That's a Besage you. We could subtlety it. Yeah, we'll let it go. Probably better just a Supreme Verdict anyway. Well, crack the Flooded Strand. Meticulous Archive. Lorian revealed to the graveyard. Come on, Phoenix. Steam vents. Blue, white, white, whatever. Get rid of the Blighted Agent. 
Wow, they're playing Tiver Stand. Okay. Well, that's super awkward. Flooded Strand go. I mean, we still have the solitude, but the way it goes with Infect, we could just be dead. Opponent. I mean, we gotta try if we're dead, we're dead. Pitch the Teferi, solitude. Go for the Blighted Agent. Do you have even more protection? Wow, triple protection spells. All right, that means we need to find the Phoenix right now or a removal spell. All right, Pony had triple, triple protection in hand, including indestructibility. That Tiver stand was huge. Uh, well, get Thundering Falls. We need the Surveil. How about a Phoenix? Counter spell will not do it here. Lorian revealed. So that means we're pretty much dead, right? One, two, three, four, and five. Lorian revealed, draw. Land tapped past the turn. Well, I mean, we found stuff for next turn, but odds of a next turn don't seem super high here. We're not literally dead on board. Ah, oh, triple protection. Pownet fires up the Ink Moth Nexus. Attacks and has a pump spell. Frudo. <laughs> this deck feels so close, but it doesn't win. Hello, opponent. Have fun and good luck. Please don't interact with us wink <laughs> i'm just gonna start rule zero conversation being people polluted delta oh god another counter magic what is everyone playing counters why is everyone playing good magic decks <laughs> you're supposed to be playing jank opponents to make our life easier well, even more preordains in a land. All right, so well, that's kind of awkward because we kind of want to play this Thundering Falls. I guess we can do it next turn. Put on top, put on top. I mean, I guess we can still play it. We are going to keep the preordain, though. I think we want all of it. Craig Sepluder Delta. Surveil land? I feel a surveil land coming. I feel a sur surveil lands are all over the place. They are pretty good, yeah. There's a surveil. Oh, it is a blue deck. Well, buckle up. Can we find our way to fight through the disruption? So Thundering Falls, keep the preordain. Go. Oh, we're getting scammed, I see. All right. Oh, it's the Gorios Reanimator deck. Yep, yep, yep. So opponent going to grief us, and then Ephemerate the Grief, and we're gonna get Thought Seize thrice. Uh, so what do they take? One ring, and then, uh, so Prismatic Vesta, then one ring, then, I guess the answer is just everything. They're just gonna take it all. <laughs> Ephemerates takes a one ring, gets a grief. Well, we will cast a Preordain. I mean, we can keep all these cards on top and try to like solitude the grief. Well, bottom and top, preordain, bottom and bottom, and flooded strand. Well, maybe we find another one ring. That would be sweet. We gotta find it before we die to reanimation. So opponent can blink the grief. Thought sees number three. Well, I mean, we can get a surveil land, right? To keep digging, assuming we're alive. Oh, come on now, opponent, are you serious? All right, thought sees number four. So opponent just kept one land blink grief a million times. All right, let's see if we can find something we can cast. Counter spell, uh, that's not exactly it. It'll just get thought seized. Feeble the mirror breaker. All right, that's actually better than the other options. <laughs> And there's a force of negation. All right, well, pass the turn. Uh, I mean, I think our opponent knows not even to blink here because all oh, we got's a sacred foundry. Well, for heaven, one land, opponent's kind of popping off. Opponent hits us with the grief. We draw lamp light phoenix. How do you like us now, opponent? Boom, boom. That's a three three flyer. About it. It's us. So this is apparently the new best deck in modern, they say, which I guess makes sense. Scamming and also being able to uh, reanimate Atraxa seems pretty powerful. Big draw, counter spell. So not exactly. We'll hit you with the Phoenix. I mean, counter spell is not the absolute worst, I guess. Like it does stop things at some point, but opponent, tainted indulgence. Do we counter this? Yeah, let's counter spell it. <laughs> All right, opponent. Second force negation. I think they only play two typically. And okay, discards a prismatic ending. Well, you can see those thought seizes adding up. Scalding Tarn. Well, play the Scalding Tarn. I think we're out of surveil lands. We can't even block the grief because of menace, which means we probably can't crack the Scalding Tarn because of the grief clock. 
Oh, One Ring would be an interesting draw. Actually, our combo would be the best draw. Okay, Leyline Binding. That is a that is a meaningful draw. That is a draw that can actually matter here. Hit you to eight past the turn. We are going to Leyline Binding to get rid of the grief. And now maybe the Phoenix can get there if our opponent doesn't do anything crazy. Crack the Scalding Tarn. Do we have any Surveillance lands left? No. But we do get to thin the deck. Steam Vent Stepped. Come on, Magic Gods. Come on, Magic Gods. Combo. Give us that. Give us that altar. Well, go to combat attack. Hit ya. I think we actually hard cast it now. Florian's revealed. Oh my god. Altar of Dementia. I mean, we're gonna go for it. Altar of Dementia? And uh mill you. Collect some evidence. Get it back. This should be game. We mill a grizzle brand. Okay, so mill ourselves. Our opponent doesn't have enough mana, right? That even if they like have Gorio's Vengeance to get back the Grizzle Brand, they don't have enough mana to cast anything, so it shouldn't matter. So we should just be able to combo kill here. One, two, three, four exiled. Get back the Phoenix. Mill. Mill ourselves. Get back the Phoenix. One, two. Mill. An opponent knows what's happening. And we survived. Not one, not two, but three. No, four. Four. We got Thoughtseize four times. <laughs> Quadruple Thoughtseize, Grief Ephemerate, and Double Force Negation. I don't know how we survived, but we did. Uh, so, Soul Guide Lantern in. Dovin's Veto in. Turn the Earth seems good. That comes in. Is Ashiak worth? What do we have? So, Veil of Summer can. Potentially stop the scam, although it's a little awkward on the draw. Maybe the subtlety? Maybe subtlety to stop the scam. Is that even worth it? Just everyone empties their hands? What about Ashiok? That's the other question. So Prismatic Ending seems pretty bad, right? I don't think this even has targets. I guess Felicia Archaeologist. So we can go down Prismatic Endings. I guess in theory we could kill Grief with it, but that seems like a stretch. Dead Gone can get Grief. Although, again, we're on... We're on the draw, which is going to make it awkward. Subtlety seems good. Solitude can deal with the grief. Leyline Binding, probably necessary. I guess we can trim like a Fable, and I guess Supreme Verdict seems questionable. Pick your poison. Is it good enough? So it can answer a big flyer, but yeah. All right, we're going to, we're just going to run it like that. The full combo, but no lands. This is not a deck I like mulliganing against, but we don't really have a choice. Oh, dear. I think we're doing our opponent's job for them this game. Uh, subtlety to the bottom. We're going to put land to the bottom. Subtlety and land. And this means if our opponent tries to grief scam, we can solitude it. I mean, that's still empty. <sighs> we're swinging up zero cards in hand. Hell of a fountain, untapped. <clears throat> yeah, I guess we just got to let it go, actually. It doesn't even really work the way we want, right? With ephemerate. Because if we try to solitude, they can just ephemerate in response. So it still doesn't really... <sighs> Boy. All right, so opponent has this draw again. Hooray. So I guess we're going to get Thought Seized. Oh, this is not a good time to mold a five, that's for sure. We're hoping, I guess, for a land. Not a land. Well, play the land. Crack the Flooded Strand. Hallowed Fountain untapped and cast a Preordain. Looking for lands. Not a land. Oh, God. Not a land. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh! Now they can scam the eagle and and we are stuck on one land. Yep, sure, sure. Yeah, we, we didn't want any of these cards. Joke's on you, opponent. We didn't want to play magic this game. Opponent takes the Dovin's Veto. Uh, ephemerate number two. Thought sees number four. We won last game after this happened somehow. Opponent passes. And ephemerates. Well, we will. Well, here comes ephemerates. Four, five, six, seven. We will cycle the eagle to get an elegant parlor. Just keep scamming. Going to scam the grief. Take Leyline Binding or Altar of Dementia. Okay, takes the Altar of Dementia. Well, we'll play the parlor. We will surveil. We will keep a flooded strand past the turn. Thoughtseize number five? Are we doing it? Are we going all the way? All right, Thoughtseize number five to take the Leyline Binding. Yeah, in some ways, this is even better than the old scam, right? Because the old scam, at least you could play around with, uh, with like the solitude, but Ephemera actually avoids the solitudes too. That makes it even more brutal. I mean, the only thing we sort of have going for us, and I don't even know if this counts, but the only thing we sort of have going for us is we have more lands than our opponent. Our opponent once again had one land scam plan, but they will draw lands eventually 
eventually gets in with the grief. I mean, they're probably sitting on a handful of Force Negations. Uh, Meticulous Archive. Eagles of the North. We're actually going to keep the Eagles of the North and just plain cycle it. Keep hitting our lands here. We have enough lands that we'll be able to cast a Wondering if we draw it. Whether or not it actually resolves, that's a, a whole nother question. Yeah, we had a lot of cards hit. Oh, we also mulled a five this game, which is brutal. Against this matchup, mulliganing is so bad, but we had literally zero landers, so there wasn't anything we could do about it. But it is especially brutal to mulligan against a scam deck. Scams in for three. Passes. I mean, we're gonna cast it. We got nothing else to do. Might as well. It worked last time. Can't scam the top of our deck. Godless Shrine untapped. Fainted Indulgence, discards a Troxa. Yeah, I mean, if they can reanimate a Troxa, that would do it. Reanimates a Troxa? Well, not yet. Okay, opponent gets in with the Grief. I mean, we're kind of just dying to the Grief anyway. Opponent's got five cards in hand, we have zero. That is pretty tough to Fairy Time Raveler. Well, go to combat, get in with a Lamplight. We gotta try to play the Teferi. I do not expect it to resolve, but we're not doing anything else, so one, two, Three to fairy. I mean, pretty much we just gotta cast what we draw. <laughs> Opponent going to commandeer the Teferi, pitching Force of Negation and Faithful Mending. Uh, sure. <laughs> Opponent cracks the Marsh Flats. I think these decks play like usually like a single commandeer in the sideboard. Opponent mills a Solitude, bounces the Phoenix to draw a card. So the one way we could theoretically win, and I don't have any faith it can actually happen. Oh, all right. Now there's no ways we can theoretically win. I was going to say if we drew the Altar of Dementia, there might be a way we could just combo off still. Solitude, but we can't cast it. Oh, all right. We will pass the turn. Have we been Thoughtseize six times this game? I'm pretty sure we got Thoughtseize six times, with five of them being in the first three turns. Well, going into game three, going into game three, we're going to be on the play. This is just a scam deck, isn't it? It's a scam deck. It's a scam deck, but you can reanimate Atraxa to get more scam pieces. We're on the play for game three, which means Veil of Summer would actually be an answer to the scam. Plus, it's always possible that our opponent does not have Grief, Black Card, Double Ephemerate. <laughs> like, they've had the exact same hand in two games, which is Grief, Black Card, two Ephemerates, one land, and then two, two random cards, mostly Force of Negations. I mean, we can't not keep this hand. We can't just mulligan into a... Uh, is our opponent keeping seven? So that means they're gonna do the thing. We can't not keep this hand, right? We have to keep this hand. This hand has our Altar of Dementia. It's got a One Ring. It's even got a Leyline by name that can answer stuff. So I think we have to keep it. The only problem is if our opponent just does the same thing again. Wow, are they not gonna do it for once? We are not getting scammed on turn one. Miracle of miracles. So we can take Elegant Poller and then Breeding Pool lets us cast Leyline for two. All right, so that's Elegant Poller. Surveil, Thundering Falls. I think we go Graveyard to the Graveyard. Grief doesn't have flesh now, right? <laughs> It hasn't been, it hasn't been eroded to, okay, opponent's just getting a Meticulous Archive on the end step. Well, we untap. Surgical Extraction, that would be good against our combo. We're gonna play a Plains, and we're going to play a Altar of Dementia. Opponent does not have an answer, pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Passes. Solitude. In that case, we will Breeding Pool, untapped, and Fable the Mirror Breaker. So since we drew the solitude, if our opponent does manage to reanimate something, at least we have a have an answer to it. Well, pass the turn. That surgical scares me. We don't really have a great way of stopping the surgical. Untap down to 60. And here comes the looting. Emerical the Eon's torn. Everything shuffles back in. Okay, that's actually pretty good for us. That's actually really good for us. So the opponent has no graveyard. I'm kind of scared to play the one ring. Felicia Archaeologist. Mills can get back a Faithful Mending. Passes. Hollowed Fountain. Well, we will... Do we just discard both lands? So opponent's gonna Solitude to get rid of the Goblin. Well, in that case, we probably just discard one land. Uh, do we want the life? We could sack it to Mill. Yeah, I think we let it go. Okay, so we will discard a Hollowed Fountain. Keep one land, draw a card. 
Alter Dimension. Well, Sacred Foundry untapped. We're going to go for it. If they got blue cards and commandeers, it's kind of brutal, but one ring. Resolves. Draw a card. Pass the turn. Did not get Force Negation. Did not get commandeered. We got a shot. I feel like we have a shot here somehow. I feel like we're, we're in it. We're in it. At least we're not dead. Life is much easier when you don't get thought seized four times, five times, six times. Spell my marsh flats cracks. Passes. Well, we take one off the ring. We draw a counter spell, which is pretty sweet. We get to flip. Well, play a scalding tarn. Activate the one ring. Crack a scalding tarn to grab an island and pass the turn. The tide may have turned. We'll see. Opponent, Faithful Mending. I mean, I'm still cared, uh, scared of an Atrox or Grizzlebrad coming down. We can try to fight it with a counter spell. They can't force of negation. All right, there's the Atroxa. They can't force a negation for free during their turn, at least. Opponent, counter spell the Grief. Opponent will Gorio's Vengeance, Atroxa. So we will Leyline Binding, the Atroxa. Opponent tries to ephemerate, so we will Solitude, pitching Eagle of the North, to get rid of the Atroxa. I guess we just sack it to mill ourselves? Well, our opponent is going to refill their hand, which is less than ideal. They get, well, a Commandeer, Felicia Archaeologist. Well, actually, maybe they take Force to Negation. What cards do they actually take here? So, Archaeologist, Planes... Prismatic ending force and negation. Okay, so they get those four cards. Grief is answered. All right, plays the planes. If we draw the Phoenix, we could try to win here, right? Force and negation doesn't stop it. We untap, and we get the one ring to draw a bunch of cards, and we have this preordain too. Another preordain. Well, step one, one ring, draw three. That's the lamplight Phoenix. Does this mean we're good? Well, let's preordain, see what we can hit. Well, we'll keep Soul Guide Lantern. Bottom and top. Play Flooded Strand. Play Soul Guide Lantern. Get rid of a Faithful Mending. The question is, can we actually win through an Emrakul? And I'm not sure that we can. Lamplight Phoenix. And crack the Flooded Strand. An opponent. Scoops it up. Oh, finally! We have overcome and beaten the best deck in modern. Wow. Honestly, though, unless our opponent drew into the Emrakul, they have one card we don't know about in their hand. I'm not sure we actually win here. Well, <sighs> We should be able to, right? Because of the, the Soul Guide Lantern. So we start comboing. Eventually, they're going to hit the Emrakul. Once they hit the Emrakul, we're able to just nuke it. But <clears throat> yeah, I don't I don't know. They could have forced a negation the Soul Guide Lantern, which makes me think they had something else going. I, I don't know. I don't know how we ended up there, but... Wow. Okay. We fought, this deck has played some really close games. Well, finally, we come out on top of one of those close games. And thank you, opponent, for not making us click through all of it. Definitely appreciate that. Jeez. Well, sweet, sweet. So uh, this hand, we're on the play, so it's fine. We can Lauren's Revealed to get a... Probably Lauren's Revealed for a Surveil land to set up expressive iteration on turn three. If we don't find another land. If we find a land that we could potentially Teferi on three. Opponent said, no joke, two matches who I played a guy called not Saffron Olive. <laughs> uh, what are the what are the chances? All right, flooded strat. So I'm for our opponent. Passing. So opponent could be coffers, I guess. Let's take the planes and then island cycle for thundering falls. And then thundering falls. Yeah, let's keep the Phoenix. Maybe we're on the Phoenix beatdown plan. So next turn we can to ferry. Opponent, Swamp, and passes. Well, play the land, play Teferi. Take up Teferi past the turf. Yeah, we probably shouldn't have got the planes. The planes was a little clunky there. Demolition field. And opponent has Shieldred's Edict. Well, there goes our Teferi. Now, I, so many Lamplight Phoenix, too many Lamplight Phoenixes. Expressive iteration. Preordain. Library will go Solitude, and then Exile the Flooded Strand. Play the Flooded Strand. All right, let's crack Flooded Strand. Steam Vents and Preordain. 
So we're looking for Ultra Dementia primarily. Graveyard Subtlety, since we can't even cast it. Keep the Archive for now, pass the turn. Well, let's see what our opponent's got. More Demolition Fields. I mean, we can answer this slowly. We find a counter spell. We'll play the Meticulous Archive. Definitely milling the Phoenix. I mean, I guess we have to... Leyline Binding the One Ring. Pass the turn. I mean, we're alive for the moment. We just need the Altar of Dementia, basically. Man, that's a lot of Field of Ruins. I don't even know any basics we have. All right, opponent. Very good at drawing One Rings, unfortunately. We could not counter the One Ring. Opponent's drawing a ton of cards. Passes the turn. Well, I mean, we're gonna do that as well. One ring. Wouldn't mind drawing a land here, that'd be sweet. Land to leave up the counter spell? That would be, that would be the most ideal. Well, one ring, draw. Well, okay, not a one ring, but that is an ultra dementia. Odds of us winning the game next turn, increasing. We don't have defense, but we do have the full combo. Hopefully. How many basics do we have? One planes, one island. Oh God, if our opponent just fires off demolition fields, we are in such bad shape. Somehow, yeah. That would be really bad. Hopefully they don't realize that and they just do other things because they got a bunch of cards in hand. Opponent, one, two. Oh, wait, we have one mountain. Okay. Okay, we have one mountain I missed. Not a strip mine yet. One, two, three, four. So we should be good, right? We take some damage. We draw Lauren's Revealed. She Aldred, we take some damage. They can't have main deck graveyard hate, right? That's gonna blow us out by surprise. I don't know what it would possibly be. Actually, you know what? Let's just draw with the one ring first. We'll take the beats. Draw with the one ring. She Aldred does its thing. Solitude, pitch the prismatic ending to get rid of the She Aldred and get it in the graveyard. Now we can island cycle. Lorian's revealed to get it in the graveyard. Grab a hollowed fountain. Hollowed fountain untapped. Altar of Dementia. One, two, three. Lamplight Phoenix. And now we're off to the races. So Zach Lamplight, mill ourselves. Definitely collect some evidence, uh, which will be Lamplight Preordain. Get it back. Always yield. So mill ourselves. Zach it. Yes. Get rid of subtlety. An opponent <laughs> sees what happens and sees what's happening and scoops it up. I am very glad our opponent did not cast both Field of Ruins uh, or use both Field of Ruins. That would have gotten us. So opponent's Mono Black Coffers. What do we want against Mono Black Coffers? Coffers, I do like the Coffers deck. It's kind of a little trony, but it is it's it is a cool deck. Oh, they're probably gonna have Necromentia to hate on our combo. Vale of Summer's in. How do we deal with a Karn the Great Creator? Supreme Verdict's not good. Dead God, probably not necessary. Counter spells seem good. Fable seems fine. Teferi seems fine. Prismatic Ending, I guess in theory, can get rid of a Karn. It's a lot of mana, but it is possible. Maybe we go on like one Subtlety, one Prismatic Ending, run it like that. 69 card special, <laughs> which I think is the optimal, the optimal number for this deck. Little soft to you, a bunch of discard, but the counter spells are reasonably nice. Well, there's a subtlety. Let's meticulous archive. Do we keep this? Yeah, I guess we'll keep the preordain. Keep the preordain past the turn. So four is kind of the big number, right? As far as leaving up counters, four mana is when when uh, Karns and so forth could start coming down. Preordain. Yeah, we'll keep the lamplight. That is combo piece number one. So draw the lamplight, play the flooded strand, pass the turn. Let's see if they have the coffers. They do. Thankfully, still does not make, oh, wait, does make four mana. That's awkward. The power of Sunken Citadel. Opponent, she Shieldred. Well, I think we have to subtlety. Exiling a Lauren revealed, unfortunately. Little early for a shield rid. So put that on top for now. Yeah, we don't actually have a way to answer this Cabal Coffers. We don't have Field of Ruin or anything, so we're just gonna have to play through it. Well, crack the Flooded Strand. Get a Surveil Land. I do love these Surveil Land. The Surveil Lands are so good. Preordain. Graveyard. Pass the turn. Draw Preordain. Well, all of our Preordains are on the top of the deck, apparently. Well, we will pass the turn. So we have the Lamplight Phoenix. We have to leave up the counter this turn. We will counter a Shieldred. 
Opponent plays a swamp. Ah, they just make so much mana. The Sunken Citadel is doing some work. Well, one and two. Counterspell Shieldred. Opponent going to pass. We will cycle Lurian Reveal. Breeding Pool. Leyline Binding. Well, Breeding Pool. Untapped. Preordain. Bottom. Bottom. Ugh, into a Plains. All right, Plains is not what we really wanted because Plains is one of our very few basics. And we know our opponent's playing a bunch of Field of Ruins effects. Oh, double coffers. Oh no. Well, hopefully our opponent just has a bunch of removal in hand. We don't have enough counters to stop that many threats. I mean, we have to stop Necromentia or we lose. So we're gonna counter it. Oh, okay. That's actually kind of fine. Just a troll. Well, play the land. I think we run out the Phoenix. I don't know what exile based removal they would have. So getting down a Phoenix actually is probably safer than holding it in hand because of Necromentia. So play the Lamplight Phoenix, pass the turn. We can use a Leyline Binding if we have to. We can afford to take a troll hit. The fact that our opponent had all that mana and the best thing they could do was troll is, is good news for us. Karn, the great creator and takes it down. Yeah, we could manage one coffers. Two coffers is just tough. Tormod's Crypt. All right, plays a Tormod's Crypt and then kills the Phoenix. March of Wretched Sorrow. So now our opponent blows the Tormod's Crypt. Well, this game might come down to who draws a one ring. Our opponent's down to one card. We can answer the current Karn. We can answer the troll, but that is essentially all of our cards. Our combo is not close at all, thanks to this Karn. Well, we will, ah, Karn is so busted. Leyline Binding, get the Karn. Untap, one ring. Oh my God, we would have actually drawn it. Ultra of Dementia, so we will pass. We gotta hope our opponent does not have anything for a minute. If our opponent could just, I mean, they've played Shieldred into Necromentia, into Karn. Hopefully they're about done with, with bombs. And then we need to find another Phoenix now. Solitude, get rid of the troll. One ring also acceptable. We would not complain about that. Opponent land. What's this last card? Makes a bunch of man, oh God. Okay, 13 mana. Okay, so they're gonna march. They gain a ton of life, but they're out of cards. If we top deck a Phoenix, we can win. Well, okay, not a Phoenix, but that is a draw three. And drawing cards is good. Uh, cast, Lorian's revealed. Steam vents, tapped. Well, that's a one ring. Oh, all right, no whammies. No good cards, no Karns, please. Passes, play a one ring. Get some protection. Play Scalding Tarn. Uh, let's just one ring. More scalding tards. All right, pass the turn. Opponent untaps. No Karn, no Karn, no Karn, no Karn. Oh boy, man is being tapped. That's a bad sign. Okay, it's a troll. Okay, that's that's okay. That's not a Karn. We're alive. Let's crack this scalding tard. Get a elegant pauler. Dual surveilling. Looking for not a hollowed fountain. That's gonna go in the graveyard. Well, we untap. We drop to nine. Feeble of the Mirror Breaker. So this is what, six, seven, eight? Well, draw with the one ring. Let's expressive iteration. Veto to hand. Island to the bottom. One ring to exile. Scalding tar. Play a second ring. Activate the ring. All right, there's a solid two, that's good. But we can pass, and things, I mean, we mentioned before, this might come down to who draws the one ring first, and we drew the one ring first. I don't know if that's actually a good place for a format to be, where whoever draws a certain card first is like that advantage, but uh, modern, ladies and gentlemen, uh, opponent passes. Well, we take a little one ring damage. Ooh, Veil of Summer, come on, come on. Show us the, hmm, not the Phoenix, we'll play the land, play to Fairy. Bounce the troll. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Mega Goblin. Pass the turd. So if they have Necromancia, we have Veil of Summer. We just need to find a Phoenix. We just need to find a Phoenix. I mean, we get to draw a ridiculous number of cards next turn. Cause we have Fable to loot. We have one ring to draw three. Opponent gives us the GG and, well, we didn't combo that game, but we did manage to grind out the victory. I mean, I guess that's the power of the one ring. That card is something. Like, our opponent's 
a better one ring deck than we are. We're 69 cards. Uh, our opponent, <laughs> our opponent doesn't just have the one ring. They also have card to find the one ring. So they're playing like eight one rings or whatever, seven one rings. So they have more rings than us. They're not a 69 card deck. Uh, but we just happened to be the one that drew the ring this game and uh, managed to ride to victory. Well, huh, we'll take it. We are trying to combo off with Lamplight Phoenix of all things in modern. 68 card Lamplight Phoenix combo. 68 card decks, the new, the new hotness in uh in magic these days, apparently. And we get to play first, which is good. Boy, these games have been so close. Well, I mean, I guess we keep this. I mean, we got removal and what Oh boy, Landline of the Guild Pact. Oh, so we have answers for that. We just don't have them very quickly. Well, Steam Vents untapped. So we can cycle the Eagles of the North. I don't think we get enough land types. Well, maybe we can, we'll see. Opponent, Wild McCoddle. Well, let's cycle Eagles of the North. Grab a, oh, we do have a Temple Garden. All right, get a Temple Garden. Passes. Well, Temple Garden, ouch, untapped. And we are just going to Leyline Binding. Get rid of this ley line of the guild pact. Pass the turn. Not bad, not bad, not dead. Back down to just a 1-1 at the moment. The deck's a lot less scary without the, the ley line, although they're gonna have a bunch of burn, probably stubborn denials, pwn it. Down to 13. Territorial Kavu. We draw Thundering Falls. I think what we have to do is just, again, Leyline Binding, while your opponents tap down, get rid of the Kavu, play the Thundering Falls. Do we want the Planes? Planes can go Graveyard, pass the turn. I mean, we can one ring into one ring, assuming it resolves, which is not a guarantee, but that could buy us some time, maybe. We do have zero combo. We need these one rings to draw us combo pieces. Down to 10. Ah, we're under a lot of pressure. Overgrow Tomb and Scion of Draco. Scalding Tarn, crack Scalding Tarn, Island, and uh, play the One Ring. Get a little protection, which we desperately need here. We're, we're gonna be dead. We definitely need this Time Walk. And I mean, I guess we might as well draw. All right, Pony has a Ley Line Binding. Well, so much for our drawing a card plan. We still get protected. Neshoba Brawler. I have this feeling that, well, I don't know. If they tap the blue mana last turn, if they have Stubborn Denial, I'm gonna be a little sad. That would pretty much just lose us the game here. Uh, Flooded Strand. Well, we will. One, two, three, four. One ring. Do you have Stubborn Denial? <laughs> Oh, all right, so our opponent, they had all of it. Um, so, pick your poisons in. <laughs> Supreme Verdict in. Ah, this deck. I feel like this deck's cursed. It's cursed. Dead Gone doesn't kill much. It can kill Ragavan, but that's about it. Maybe something like this? Supreme Verdict's pretty good against what our opponent's trying to do. Does not get Stubborn Denial. That's, that's a thing. Bad news is, the sand is... Not great at dealing with an early Ragavan. Opponents aggressively mulliganing, trying to find that ley line of the guild pact. Do I feel bad? Not even a little. Uh, we're gonna keep the flooded strike. Keep going, opponent, keep going. <laughs> Founded does not have their ley line. Uh, Ragavan's annoying. If they play a Ragavan, do we solitude it? Probably. Especially with our opponent on the mulligan, like it's probably just a necessary evil. Pwn it wins up Eath, cracks it. All right, not gonna be a Ragavan. Find the breeding pool and wild McCoddle. All right, opponent passes. We grab our flooded strand. Hmm. Yeah, we'll just we'll just pass for now. There's probably a world where we counter spell. Worst case, if we don't counter spell, we can uh, land cycle. Gets a tap land to grow the McCoddle. Gets in for three. Sure, we will take it this time. Land cycle Orion revealed. So we need red, red, blue. We're gonna need white. We're gonna need double white. All right, let's take a hollowed fountain. Crack the flooded strand. Get a elegant puller. Yeah, let's go graveyard with Lorraine revealed. Scalding Tarn, a eh? Scalding Tarn. Crack it for a island. Uh, so grab an island. Fable the Mirror Breaker. Mega Goblin, pass the turn. 
So if things go super wrong, we got the Supreme Verdict. So if they like sign of Draco or something, we can just clean up the board. The Goblin can ramp us into solitude. We still don't have any combo pieces, but hopefully we find some eventually. It's us. Opponent. There's the sign of the Draco. We draw expressive iteration. So I think we discard counter spell. Yeah, let's just discard the counter spell. Oh, there's Lamplight. Okay, that's good. So we can Hollowed Fountain untapped, go to combat, attack you, make a treasure, and now we can just Solitude to get rid of the Scion of the Draco. All right, so we need a land in Alter Dementia. Land in Alter Dementia, and we go infinite. That is all we need. We're so close. Opponent, we got the Lamplight. We can also run it out as a blocker, like we have enough evidence, although we do need to be aware of. Uh, Leyline Binding is an answer, an exile answer. Opponent finds a land. That worked out pretty well. We managed to deal with the sign of the Draco, and we still have our Supreme Verdict left over. Wow, gonna go attacking? All right, well, we will trade. Yeah, just lets it go. All right, we go back up to 12. Well, we get to flip our saga. Yeah, I mean, I think we probably just, probably just Supreme Verdict here, I think. I mean, I guess we could Teferi bounce the sign of the Draco. Get him with a goblin. They might be afraid of a bolt. Nope. All right, opponent is not afraid of a bolt. So blocks with a sign of Draco. Well, we will just one, two, three, and four. Supreme Verdict. Clean up the board. Come on, Altar of Dementia. Opponent wins up teeth, cracks it. Two cards in hand. Well, we've gone through two signs of Draco, right? And we do have a bunch of card draw to go digging for our payoffs. Opponent takes Jagatha and passes. Ooh, there's Alter. We're gonna play it safe. We're gonna play it safe. One, two, three. To Fairy Time Raveler. Take it up. We'll just pass the turn. We're gonna pass the turn. This should do it. So this means that we're gonna be guaranteed, guaranteed safe to not get countered. The problem going for it there is we still get got by Stummer Denial. Ugh. All right, opponent going to hit our Teferi. So we could still get Stummer Denialed. So one card's Jingatha. We gotta watch out for Leyline Binding, Stubborn Denial. Those are the cards we're trying to play around. Overgrown Tomb tapped. Passes, well, we will preordain. Bottom and top. I mean, Scalding Tarn lets us play around Stubborn Denial, at least. Another Lamplay Phoenix. We gotta, we gotta go for it. We gotta go for it. We have to. One, two. If their last card is Leyline Binding, they can fizzle. One, two, three. Lamplay Phoenix. Do you have it? Sag the Phoenix. Mill. Collect some evidence. Get it back. Do we do it? Do we actually do it? Oh, okay. Sag the Phoenix Mill. Collect a little evidence. <laughs> Get it back. How many cards does our opponent have? 46. Oh, we're going to have to do this a lot of times. Mill a little bit. One ring. So we need to do it to ourselves a bunch. And now we need to do it to our opponent. Oh boy, like 15-ish times? Uh, yes, we will exile to Fairy Preordain. So we just need to get a lot of evidence in the graveyard. Lamplight Phoenix, the great evidence producer. <laughs> Mill, yes, exile the one rig. I mean, we'll see, is it possible for the combo to fizzle? Hopefully not. Sack the Phoenix, collect evidence. It'll be subtlety. What evidence do you have for us utterly? What can we learn in this investigation? Mill ourselves. Pick your poison and fable. Well done, Magic Online. All right, mill ourselves. <laughs> Alter Dementia, mill. Collect some more subtlety evidence. Uh, have we reached the point where we can mill our opponent yet? I don't think quite. Uh, yes, collect evidence, counterspell, and counterspell. And mill ourselves. Collect evidence, Supreme Verdict. This evidence is sketchy. <laughs> I don't know how good this evidence really is, but Altar of Dementia, uh, Sack, Exile One Ring. I mean, we can probably mill our opponent a little bit now, just let him know what's up. So mill ourselves. Mill you, Sacking Lamplight Phoenix. Exile, uh, Lorian Revealed. Mill you. And then Altar of Dementia, Sack the Phoenix. Uh, yes, we will collect some evidence to fairy and preordain mill you. So bones at 40 cards. Opponent is at 30. Do we have enough cards in our graveyard for this to be lethal? Exile the Lorian revealed. So opponents at 37. Do it again. 
Exile Solitude. Opponents at 34. Do it again. Exile Solitude. Yeah, we're gonna have to go back to milling ourselves. We don't have enough, all right, mill ourselves. We don't have enough evidence yet. We're trying. Counterspell, prismatic ending, prismatic ending. Mill, mill ourselves. We need 11 more activations. Preordain, altar of dementia, pick your poison. We wanna exile the minimum amount of evidence each time, ideally. Uh, all right, 11 cards left, mill ourselves. Lamplight and preordain and mill ourselves. Solitude. Well, mill you. I don't know if we got enough yet or not. We're gonna try. We don't have that many cards left in our deck. So opponent, 28, mill you. 25, do we have enough? It takes a lot of clicks. Mill you, Leyline Binding. Opponent, 22, mill you. Sag the Phoenix. <laughs> Hit our swans, draw some cards. Uh, mill you, 19. And mill you. Uh, lamplight and prismatic ending. Mill you. Opponent down to 16. One, two, three, four, five. We do need to mill ourselves one more time. Lorian revealed. All right. Sack it, mill you. Yes. Leyline binding. Wow, we had to exile everything. <laughs> well, that's why we're playing 68 cards, so we actually have enough fuel to do this. And last but not least, mill you. Exile the Eagles of the North. I mean, I guess we don't even have to do this last one. We don't have to get it back, actually. There's one freebie at the end. All right, opponent, out of cards, your go. <laughs> Kill us. Kill us on your upkeep if you can. Kill us on your upkeep if you can. An opponent. Wow. Okay, we got there. We got there. It was not pretty or easy, but we did get there. <laughs> oh my god, this deck. We have not seen many nut draws. Maybe that's also because we're playing a 68 card deck, or actually right now. I don't know. Like, if you're building a 68 card deck, I think it's actually, actually just strictly better to add one more card, right? You gotta get that meme value. How do you... If you think it's actually a reason to play 68, there's got to be some justification to just go to 69 just just to get that mean value out of it. <laughs> uh, do we want to change anything else? So opponents, Domain Zoo, Leyline of the Guild Pact, etc. How could a counter spell? Is counter spell even good? But it's not like we have something that's like meaningfully better. Maybe a subtlety? Yeah, all right, let's go one more subtlety, run it like that. Subtlety is a little awkward. We don't have that many blue cards. All right, let's just have a nut draw, where it's just like turn two, turn two, play Alter Dementia. Turn three, Lamplight Phoenix win. <laughs> Maybe a land cycler on one to get the party going. <laughs> well, 45 minutes of clicking later, we have successfully competed <laughs> the Lamplight Phoenix combo. I mean, I think this is kind of like a, a brewing masterpiece though. The fact that the fact that someone looked at Lamplight Phoenix and was like, I'm gonna break it. <laughs> I am gonna figure out a way to break it. Uh, that's actually very impressive. Cause Lamplight Phoenix is a card I think pretty much just everyone overlooked. And rightly so, cause it's not a very good card. We don't have an answer to Raghavan, but honestly we don't have that many Turn one Raghavan answers, that's gonna be a thing. I mean, I guess we do, it's just pitching solitude on turn one hurts. So we do technically have it if we need to. Seems fine, and we got a one ring to work towards. And we're gonna have the land cycler in the graveyard for uh, evidentiary purposes. I don't know about the flavor of this mechanic. <laughs> like you're collecting evidence and you end up with an eagle? <laughs> a solitude? A solitude? <laughs> like we, we solved it. It was, it was an eagle, the eagles told us. <laughs> The Eagles told us it was Raghavan. <laughs> Bonet. Leyline of the Guild Pact. Well, that's not what we really wanted to see on turn zero. Our opponent's most explosive card, Forest, that is all land types. And there is the Raghavan. I mean, we're probably pitching Solitudes, unfortunately. Preordain. Well, Scalding Tarn. Crack Scalding Tarn. Preordain here, because if we can find lands... Then we can pitch the Eagles of the North, oh God. The Eagles of the North to Solitude. Oh, do we have to keep this Lamplight? Probably. Yeah, we're gonna keep it, we gotta keep it. I don't think we can pitch our 
our combo piece. The awkward part about this is I think we have to solitude pitch solitude because we need to keep leyline binding to deal with the leyline of the guild pact. So we and we need eagles of the north to hit our second land drop. Is it absurd just to take the Ragavan hit? I mean, probably, but that would delay this decision. It's only two damage. If we have Solitude pitch Solitude, we're just totally out of removal. Outside of the Ley Line, which we can't cast. Yeah, this feels bad, but I think we just have to let this Ragavan hit us this turn. Yep, don't steal anything too good. Opponent steals a counter spell. All right, that's fine. Oh, they... They have the cyan anyway. I mean, now we have to do it. So, solitude, pitch solitude. Well, so we give up that Ragavan hit for free, basically. Get rid of the Ragavan. Opponent gets the cyan. Prismatic ending. That does not do much. So we will land cycle. Eagles of the North. Elegant Poller. Play the Elegant Poller. Surveil. Lorien revealed. I mean, we, we will keep it. We can cycle that to get a land to turn on the ley line binding. Not sure we're going to be fast enough. The domain deck is near the top of the meta for a reason. The games where they have ley line of the guild pact are so explosive. Like when you have the, the turn zero ley line, the deck just pops off and it gives you the creatures for like the stumber denials. You got tribal flames, so you have like absurd burn. It's just like so wild, the games where you have it. Opponent flooded strand. I don't even know if we're gonna survive until we get to this one ring. Seeming less likely. Opponent, two mana. Tribal flames, down to six. Wow, is this two? Oh, jeez. Like, what are we supposed to do about this? It's turn two. <laughs> it's turn two and we're at six and we're facing down this huge unbeatable hexproof board. Yeah, I mean, that just does it, right? So we can Lorien reveal to get a land to get rid of the Leyline of the guild pack, but we die. Can't target anything because of Cyan and And yeah, I mean, that, that does just do it. Well, this might go down as one of those decks that is really interesting and gets some cool combo wins, but record-wise, just does not quite do it. We are playing Lamplight Phoenix, so. <laughs> <laughs> what, did, what did you expect? Boy, near misses, near misses with this deck. So what do we learn this week about Lamplight Phoenix combo in modern? And overall with the deck, we ended up going two and four, which eh, not super great. I will say though, the deck performed way better than the record suggested. If you look at a lot of our losses, oh, they were so brutal and it was like so close. And like we fight through all of our opponent's counters and get everything set up. And then the turn we go to combo, our opponent's empty handed and their draw step is another counter, which lets them survive. Like, the losses were so incredibly close. So a lot of them, I came away from them feeling, well, a little bit disappointed, but overall feeling like, oh, this actually performed pretty well. Like, it wasn't like, oh, we got blown out and it wasn't functional. It was like these really close losses where things just didn't quite break our way. So maybe with some better luck or maybe some better playing with a deck that we've never played before, maybe we would have snuck, I think, at least one or maybe two more wins out of it. And the record would have looked a lot better. I will say the combo did work like there are downsides to it it can get got by graveyard hate which is kind of annoying because our backup plan isn't very legitimate i guess our backup plan is like beating down with evoke elementals maybe so if her combo does get shut down it is kind of annoying to try to win but most people just don't know what the deck's trying to do i don't even know if they know to bring in graveyard hate against the deck but every time we actually managed to get the combo set up and execute it it worked exactly like we thought and we even had a game that we needed each and every mana value. We comboed off so quickly that we actually had to exile every single bit of mana value from our entire deck to fill off the combo. So all that math we were talking about way back in the beginning of the video in the deck tech, it actually played out in practice. And I'm still just like blown away at how awesome the brewing of this deck is. That someone somehow... I wish I knew how it happened. I don't know how someone landed on Lamplight Phoenix of all things, and then Altar of Dementia, and then mathed out the whole thing, and ended up with this really weird mathy combo that's so precise and exact with 68 cards and all this weird stuff going on, but it actually works. So that is Lamplight Phoenix combo. That has been our deck for today. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon.